I'm well aware that many people that are going to watch this video will be the people who consider Jordan Peterson to be a very sophisticated intellectual, and so do I. This is not going to be an expose or a diss video on the man, but rather it is a critical analysis of his message with my own personal reflections, so consider this to be some form of a critique, and hopefully a video from which you can look at Jordan Peterson from a different angle. Now, Jordan Peterson has mostly been critiqued by the left, who had often lied about him and disagreed with his basic message of fixing yourself before you fix society, which I will talk about in a bit. He was also criticized by the fringe elements of the right, accusing him of forgetting about demographics and being a centrist. And of course there were some great conspiracy theories attempting to understand the motivations of his behavior on both sides. My critique of Jordan Peterson will be from a different angle, although still addressing some of the points raised before me from both the left and the right, and I promise you that I will not dwell into motivation theories, because I can't quite understand with certainty what's at his core anyways, despite having watched all of his lectures before he came back from the dead. Perhaps the only thing that is clear is that he's trying to save western civilization with an emphasis of order and individualism, but what does he value the most? My best guess is, is some form of a mixture of universalism, Darwinism and functionalism. Frankly, I'm not even sure if he's that big of a rugged individualist as he claims to be, as he clearly values deeper community solidarity, as he is defending values and ideas of Christianity, sense of meaning and other Darwinian truths in his sense of the word. In any event, what matters at the end of the day is his influence on the broader world world, how people perceive him, and is he really that savior of the western civilization we're all been waiting for? To answer those questions, I'll have to go back in time and share a personal story of how I discovered him in the first place, and believe it or not, my experiences are common among the only demographic that listens to him. I was probably a little late to the party, and when I first watched Now Famous or perhaps in Famous Agenda with Stephen Payton episode about the controversial Bill C-16 in early 2017, I didn't think of him much at the time, just another unfortunate academic who is going to get fired for speaking his mind. Nothing new, though I kept hearing from him back again and I have never binged watch him at the time, just occasionally he would show up in my feed, often finding myself in agreement with him and even growing to respect him, but nothing more. It was probably the summer of 2017 when things have changed, as I've started a marathon reading on Fyodor Dostoevsky with one book touching me very deeply, that is the Notes from the Underground, which is a book that deals with social exclusion, egoism, altruism and resentment. At the time, I had similar feelings as the main anti-hero in the book, mostly a result of social exposure and socialization. I have thought a lot about the book to a point where I've decided to see what have other people said about it as well, and out of sheer curiosity, I became interested in hearing what Jordan Peterson thought of it, as I began to recognize him as a person with wisdom. Now, he didn't really cover the book, but I found a couple of clips of him vaguely talking admirably about Fyodor Dostoevsky, I became very impressed. Jordan Peterson's speech was very emotional and vague and as a consequence open to many interpretations and I became convinced that he had deeply understood Dostoevsky as I did, because I heard from him what I wanted to hear. I would not make a stretch to assume that this is how many others have developed an emotional attachment to Jordan Peterson. He spoke about something people cared about in a way as to show that he cares about it too, while always leaving the room for multiple interpretations, and I found my interpretation to be correct and as a result I have started binge watching his videos. The western values and competency were under attack and there was no question about it, and the ones attacking it were very resentful of them, just that anti-hero in the notes from the underground. The solution of course was the rugged individualism, respect for hierarchy, a sense of meaning and a dismissal of resentfulness that I have wholeheartedly embraced, as did most people who have watched him leaving their group identities behind. 
Now, I have not read any of his books, but I've spoken to a couple of people who did, and they have told me that they are no different from what he preaches on YouTube, just without the visual contact and with more metaphors. But in any event, at around the Katie Newman interview, I have seen all of his available lectures on any given topic that one can possibly come up with, including the global warming that he denied. At the time, he was probably my biggest role model, so to speak, and I have begun remodeling my life accordingly to his recommendations, some which I will follow for the rest of my life. My favorite ones was to self-analyze your speech and stop saying things that would make you seem weak. If I were to paraphrase him, as I can't find the original clip where it was taken from. Funny enough, I have produced two videos about a half a year ago, which were some sort of a parody to 12 Rules for Life, where I was arguing for 12 Rules for being a chat and its opposite, and there was one comment that said that I have basically copied it from his book that I haven't actually read, but in reality those rules were my own recommendations and observations that I have gathered for years, but with the underlying influence of Jordan Peterson, from who consciously I have taken only one advice, which is to clean your room, an advice that sometimes I have trouble following, and frankly so does Jordan Peterson. But the person who has accused me of copying it doesn't realize that it is possible for some people to be creative sometimes, and I rather take it as a compliment, but also an example of how deeply Jordan Peterson had impacted my life in those ways that I can't even consciously think of. I was following him very closely until he had done a debate with Matt Dillahunty, a guy who ran the Atheist Experience show, and this debate was the first debate where Jordan Peterson was shown to be unreasonable. I watched it a multiple times in a matter of a week, and there were multiple occasions where Jordan Peterson had clearly demonstrated himself as a person who doesn't perceive truth or reality accurately. He was saying things that were, if I were to say without any exaggeration, ridiculous. If you take mushrooms and you have an experience that you describe as mystical, um, then you'll increase your chances of smoking, but that doesn't tell me whether or not there was something uh, to this notion that they had an experience that was supernatural in any sense. Well, it's not definitive evidence. It's, but it's not evidence. evidence at all. Oh, sure it is. Oh, sure it is. No, it, How is it? Wait a second. Wait a second. That was seen as inferior in comparison to the outgoing, easy, understandable and rational speech by Matt Dillahunty, whom I started watching right after the debate. What's your definition of the supernatural? So there is the natural world. Yeah. And then there are people who make claims that something is not part of the natural world, that it has some external supernatural origin. Oh, you know, we, if we go down the road with Dostoevsky, that, you know, uh, if there is no God, everything's permissible. Uh, first of all, I don't think that's remotely true, because I have... He makes a pretty vicious case for it, beyond good and evil. And despite the fact that it sounds monumentally arrogant, I think I can demolish that case in about two minutes with his secular morality lecture. <laughs> Uh, but Suddenly I have started to question a lot of his other assertions, especially about meaning, because they were vaguely defined in such a way as to protect them from scrutiny and save his main idea that is not always explicitly stated. For instance, consider his definitions of a god in a debate with Sam Harris. God is how we imaginatively and collectively represent the existence and action of consciousness across time as the most real aspects of existence manifest themselves across the longest of time frames, but are not necessarily apprehensible as objects in the here and now. So what that means in some sense is that you have conceptions of reality built into your biological and metaphysical structure that are a consequence of processes of evolution that, that occurred over unbelievably vast expanses of time, and that structure your perception of reality in ways that it wouldn't be structured if you only lived for the amount of time that you're going to live. And that's also part of the problem of deriving values from facts, because you're evanescent and, and you can't derive the right values from the facts that portray themselves to you in your lifespan, which is why you have a biological structure that's like 3.5 billion years old. So, God is that which eternally dies and is reborn in the pursuit of higher being and truth. That's a fundamental element of hero mythology. God is the highest value in the hierarchy of values. That's another way of looking at it. God is what calls and what responds in the eternal call to adventure. God is the voice of conscience. God is the source of judgment and mercy and guilt. God is the future to which we make sacrifices and something akin to the transcendental repository of reputation. Here's a cool one if you're an evolutionary biologist. God, God, God is that which selects among men in the eternal hierarchy of men. So, you know, men arrange themselves into hierarchies and then men rise in the hierarchy. 
an honest person would not have so many definitions to play around out of convenience. It was almost like watching Richard Wool's three definitions of socialism that he could play around in order to not get caught in a debate with destiny, but Jordan Peterson, as admitted himself, is having difficulties with not lying. When so, was the last time you lied? Because the book says, no lying. Do you still lie? Everybody lies. As Dr. House himself told us. Mm -hmm. What is most important? But I'm pretty damn careful about it. I remember there was once a direct question on whether he believes that Jesus had risen from the dead, and that was his answer. Do you believe that Jesus rose again from the dead? Literally. I find it, I cannot answer that question. And the reason is because... Okay, let me think about it for a minute, see if I can come up with a reasonable answer to that. Well, the first answer would be, it depends on what you mean by Jesus. If you have a loved one who says, does this dress make me look fat? <laughs> the answer to that question is, I don't answer questions like that. That's the answer, right? Because the other answer is the white lie, I mean, at least in this context. And that means that, on the one hand, you're maintaining the, the, the positive contract between you and the person who's asking the question. But then you're still sacrificing the truth within that. So you're, you're, you're maintaining your relationship with the higher order truth, but sacrificing a lower order truth. And, and that would be better than the reverse, but it's not as good as not sacrificing the truth at all. Now, I know that many people have mocked him for not defending Christianity properly enough, but I actually do respect him a lot for that answer, as he knew that if he would answer positively to that, it would diminish his credibility among the intellectuals, and if he were to answer negatively, then his opinion would influence more people into abandoning Christianity and as a consequence meaning. Ultimately, it will go against his idea of order, so I do understand him here. However, the vagueness he promulgates possesses no precise meaning, just a deep emotional attachment that if you don't have, you won't be able to take him seriously. Frankly, when he came back from Russia, I was astonished how he had this new age bullshit session with his daughter and some breathing instructor, and his audience had bought it with overwhelming support, and perhaps I would have too, if I still had sticked around. Anyhow, this brings us to the most decisive moment of the debate with Matt Dillahunty, when Jordan Peterson had clearly overemphasized the role of religion in forming a moral framework, walking into another trap, and of course Matt had quickly taking advantage of it, as he is an experienced debater and I assume that Jordan Peterson never actually heard any proper rebuttals to those arguments, because if he did, he wouldn't say them, which makes him in a violation of his own advice that is not to say anything that will make him look weak. What we would lose if we lost religion, and I basically said, demonstrate to me any benefit? Oh, you'd lose the, art and poetry and drama and narrative why, and story. Why? Are there are there no godless artists and poets? Well, there are artists and poets who think they're godless. <laughs> But there he was, saying that unapologetically and perhaps bravely in hopes that people would adopt his version of the truth, a Darwinian truth, and maybe appreciate him as people appreciated Dostoevsky. The only final way of sorting out whether a scientific claim is sufficiently true is through Darwinian means. Because I think that the Darwinian process is the only way of adjudicating truth. You're simply deciding at the end of the day to say that any truths that led us down a path where we suffered unnecessarily or died weren't true. Right. You have to choose what you mean by true. You have to. And I'm not accepting the, the same definition of truth that you operate under because, and it's partly because I believe that Darwin trumps realism, let's say. I believe that pragmatism trumps realism. 
His entire defense of Christianity and metaphysics ultimately rests on his Darwinian idea of truth. As Christianity may be mediocre, yet it is more adaptive than atheism in the Darwinian sense, and as a consequence useful in providing meaning and guidance. And there it was, the battle of two truths, the Darwinian truth and the objective reality definition of truth, and that day I found the objective truth to be more convincing than the vague definition of adoptive ideas that may be built on noble lies. Even if some of the intellectuals consider Christianity to be somewhat of a Darwinian truth, most intellectuals still would not be convinced by that, as people see truths differently, including myself, although that is not to say that Darwinian ideas are not relevant. In fact, I would say quite the contrary. But an intellectual with an intolerance to ambiguity and a pursuit of truth, who was once emotionally tied to Jordan Peterson, would sooner or later, about on him just like me, because eventually people need to hear the truth. The truth that Jordan Peterson has no problem explaining to leftists if it's about human anatomy, yet never going all the way, just explaining why the things are the way they are, no normative suggestions there. But let's go back at the Darwinian truths. They are likely the ones that are motivating his other behavior, such as an undefined position regarding race, at what point acknowledging racial differences and at the other saying that race is where we draw the line about free speech, all for the sake of stability and functionality, as he perceives racialism to be threatening to survival of the species or a cohesive society. I mean, I think the fundamental criteria for drawing boundaries around the rights are claims of racial, racial or ethnic superiority. That seems to me to be the place where conservatism degenerates into something approximating ethno-nationalist fascism. It's something like that. That is why he is spreading bullcrap about race, claiming that it is somehow not intrinsic or genetic for individuals to be protecting their extended kinship in the form of race. This is another of his Darwinian truths, based on noble lies, which in reality of course are proven false, as even mainstream articles admit that we associate and help those who are similar to ourselves, and do have an intrinsic quality to advance the interests of our extended genes. But Jordan Peterson isn't having any of that. And then that's celebrated, say, on the radical right. Say, well, okay, well, if we're going to devolve into tribalism, then we'll, we'll, tri you know, we'll triumphantly herald our past accomplishments and unite under the flag of our race and blood. But we know what happens when that happens. It's not pretty. He perceives racial solidarity and group collectivity as an inherent evil because he fears that they will lead to authoritarianism, but at least he applies it to all races and groups equally, so I can't blame him for hypocrisy now, can I? Instead, he could be blamed for not properly identifying the forces at play that ideally should inform his tactics and behavior, and I'll return to it a bit later, but for now I want to touch on another thing. Whether you like it or not, but he is perceived as a defender of the status quo, as ridiculous as it may sound, with almost all media outlets to internet personalities on the left seeing him as such, whether it is the Jacobin or the philosophy tube as he is associated with order as opposed to chaos. Take his stances on feminism, for instance. Instead of using evolutionary analysis to organize a proper division of the sexes, may it just be on the cultural level, he uses it to uphold and explain the current labor and physical inequalities between the sexes. Take his views on capitalism, they are merely a rejection of socialism, and perhaps the best system we have ever tried, as we can see from his debate with Slavoj Žižek. Now take his views on individualism, that make him seem standing in the way of group rights and equality of outcomes. His ideology of individualism is merely trying to slow down the process of group identities fighting over power, and with regards to power, he doesn't even attempt to properly engage with the cultural Marxists, just dismissing them as resentful, and while doing so, 
he is seen as a conservative that is standing in the way of progress, while he could be somebody that would actually drive progress not towards the left but towards the right, but I guess it's unreasonable for me to expect him to do that considering that his main motivation for doing this all was not because he disagrees with the left on core issues but because they have gone too far. Their basic proposition is that, you know, first of all that I'm a right winger of some sort and that's just not the case. Perhaps this is why he banned Faith Goldie from attending a free speech event. He is not on her side as she is too radical and he is trying to save face. Unfortunately, this dilemma is always present among every person who is on the right, as the more a person is right wing, the more stigmatized and marginalized they are, and as a result everyone who has interacted or associated with them. For Peterson the line is white nationalism, for me it's Nazism and extremism, and what is it for you? We are all dependent to some degree on what the dominant consensus decided is acceptable, and most importantly it decides what is an extremist or a progressive and what is defending the status quo and what is going against it. And the consensus had decided that Jordan Peterson is defending the status quo and partially it is due to his own fault, as the philosophy in which he comes to the world is of Carl Jung, Dostoevsky, Solzhenitsyn, normie elements from Nietzsche, New Age interpretations of Christianity, clinical psychology, universalism and of course liberalism. This is not that particularly strong of a handout to claim that you're an opposition and the reason of his popularity is simply that the left has gone too far while the rest of the society hasn't quite caught up to the left's level yet. He's a person with wisdom and old-fashioned ideas that are always working but he is not a challenger to the system in any any meaningful way, nor he is a right-wing progressive as I am. By that I mean a person which advances history towards communities that will reflect cultural right-wing values in a way that is superior and more complex over the all previous reiterations of that. Here I finally come to his most important advice, which is to set your house in order before you try to fix the world, which was even aired by PragerU. Although it is a great advice, it is probably the biggest sign for the left that Jordan Peterson is here to protect the system and his consequences kind of do. The same system that is trying to put him and his followers down, yet his messaging works in such a way as to reinforce it. One of the biggest reasons why Jordan Peterson's new book was not banned from all major sellers was due to it being used to repress white racial consciousness, as the Penguin Random House staff openly admit. Heck, Jordan Peterson admits it himself and is proud of it. The other thing about the whole angry young white men thing is that my, my angry young white men followers are a hell of a lot less angry and a hell of a lot less white than they would have been if they wouldn't have been following me. The people who watch his channel, even though he doesn't like to admit it, are my demographic, that is young white males often disenfranchised. And there is plenty of evidence to prove that beyond any shadow of a doubt. He is not reaching a lot of women, people of color and other identity groups that perhaps should be de-radicalized. The only people who hold those western values, including liberalism and the only people who get de-radicalized are white men. Let's also not forget that it is liberalism and individualism that had gotten ourselves into this situation in the first place so that Jordan Peterson could save us from it. But he is not quote unquote saving the other identity groups who embrace collectivism, unite based on their shared interests and frankly could give less of a fuck about what a straight rich old white male by the name of Jordan Peterson has to say about individualism and western values. They will simply say that he believes that because he's a privileged white male and that's it. Individualism is not the decisive part of their being, nor it is necessarily productive for anyone in a multicultural society, where it is often perceived that group conflict drives many important venues in life. His rhetoric appeals only to whites due to historical reasons, at the end of the day making them less focused on group identity while it has no effect on other group identities besides maybe minor changes. All people are socialized 
and perhaps just like religion, an ideology that one will follow is determined by the group identity in which they belong to, and whether I, Jordan Peterson, or any other white person likes it or not, we're not going to be perceived as individuals anymore, and we can see this change happening right in front of our eyes. And Jordan Peterson and I are grouped together by society, whether Jordan Peterson likes it or not, and you can only wonder how much bad things are associated with our grouped identities. Maybe if he had taken power analysis into the consideration seriously, he wouldn't make mistakes so catastrophic, making him perceived as a defender of the status quo and blindly following the metaphysics instead of looking at power play. The reality is that his grandiose defense of western values is not going to appeal to people who aren't western or aren't interested in it in the first place, and I'm not sure why it is so hard for him to realize that. They're not going to preserve western values, they're not going to buy it en masse. Frankly, I didn't care for preserving the Jewish values when I lived in Israel. It just didn't appeal to me, as I was, as they say, a racialized minority, even though I am partially of a Jewish descent. Instead, I cared for the interests of my group and transforming Israel to something that will be more accustomed to me before I eventually left for Canada. Jordan Peterson can be critiqued from many angles, and frankly, I could make it a way longer video, as there are still many other critiques that could be made about Jordan Peterson, especially about his blind defense of certain Western values while an active sacrificing of others. But I'll leave it at that with a final thought. Ultimately, sometimes I feel like Jordan Peterson's intellectual activity can be described as a person that came from the past trying to preserve something that no longer exists. His idea of a Western society in reality has long ago collapsed and is replaced by a society that hates his core message, yet he is still trying to justify its existence, similar to an organism feeding a parasite thinking it's their offspring. He thinks that the left has gone too far and there are still ways to return things to normal, but sadly there aren't, and his project will just serve as some sort of an outer party in the Moldbagian sense, making sure that we are slowly but steadily without any conflicts are transferring into the left's version of the future instead of designing our own future. And you might object and say that he does design a future of individualism, yet individuals are strong only in a vacuum, not when there are groups formed around those individuals with common goals and shared commitments. His failure to understand power analysis, dumbing it down to a resentment and being authoritarian, does not cancel the fact that it's effective and increasingly being adopted by intersectional people across the West. At the end of the day, this is their expression of a will to power, and from an evolutionary perspective, these people will win the battle of group selection. Promises of eventually being at the top of the dominance hierarchy through meritocracy and fairness would not work on people with high ethnocentrism and low intelligence, not to mention without a western culture. And why should they work if they could just collectively bargain and get what they want without much effort? His explanations at the end of the day are just perceived to justify the current existing inequalities and will just further anger those people even more. Eventually, we'll have to face that and Jordan Peterson's baggage does not help to prepare ourselves for it. He is not a savior of a western civilization, but a wise man that came to share his wisdom, which may help to improve the life of some people, but it is safe to say that his ideology won't be followed by most people anyways, and most crucially, it is likely that Jordan Peterson would fade into obscurity in those few years if he is not going to be invited into leftist spaces to own them, as his personal ideology is conservatively oriented and thus does not presuppose progress nor a more serious attack on the left nor is particularly appealing as <laughs> conservatism is nothing new. My opinion on Jordan Peterson is still high despite the criticisms that I've just made, and I resonate with his bravery and most of the values that he stands for, 
Casting everything I've set aside in the past 10 minutes, I have stopped constantly following him since the end of 2018, but I do view his content occasionally, even though it doesn't produce any serious emotional resonation on my part, nor do I find much meaning in his philosophy anymore. I'm just viewing it because I'm curious what he has to say, and I know it might be controversial, but I think people should grow out from his influence eventually, taking the best advice and continuing to pursue knowledge from other people. His contributions are already too great, but they can solve our larger social problems, not to mention provide meaning. Well, at least for me. If you want, I might expand or produce a video about atheism or Matt Delahanty, as I was influenced by them as well, and frankly there is so much to critique about it, so many stories to share as well. But alas, this is the end, thank you for watching, and if you like this kind of content, feel free to subscribe, as I will be producing more of it.